Hey everyone, a quick video today. This won't apply to too many. If you're trying to figure out if you should buy this fan, Fuji Fan 001, if that's your question, you might want to watch. Otherwise, maybe uh, wait till my next video. Anyway, this thing was 200 bucks, uh, 200 bucks for a fan. And I almost decided to buy this one from Ulanzi because it was only 40 bucks. But I did some research and I found out this is a little bit more than a fan. Let's just open it up real quick. And you'll notice that the fan mechanism, there we go. This goes against your camera and there's no holes. The air goes in here and it comes out here. So what's going on? Well, this is actually, a, I don't know what you call it, an electrical cooling unit. Now they use things like that on CPUs, on computers, especially when they overclock them. And so it's using an electrical cooling circuitry rather than just blowing air on it. I thought, well, that sounds really good. How well does it work? So I did some search. Nobody really could show me how well it worked. So that's why I decided to do the video. We're gonna run through some tests here with some actual temperatures. And when you're done, you'll find out this, this thing is actually pretty effective. Maybe that's why it's $200. Now, do you need it or not? Probably not. In my case, my SX20, X, XS20, this works on the XS20, the XH2, and the XH2S. Those are the only three cameras that it works on from Fuji. But mine might sit on for three, four, five, six hours. And sometimes I forget to turn it off and so it's on all night. So I was a little worried about my sensor and too much heat and de uh, degradation. And so I thought, you know, maybe it's worth it. If I'm out in the field, it's not a big deal because my camera goes to sleep after about a minute. And, you know, I'm hiking around and I'll stop. Wakes right back up when you push the shutter button part way down. And so I don't really have a problem in the field. But if you're in a circumstance where you're, camera is getting pretty hot this will surprisingly do more than you might think it would let's get on to some tests okay so here's my plan the heat is just uh this acts kind of like a heat sink this area of the thing and that's why if it gets too hot you actually want to keep the display open uh, let's just measure the temperature of this surface to start with. I've got my little laser gun, and we're going to measure it right there. And you can see it's about 77 degrees. I think you can see that on that camera. Now what I'm going to do is attach this fan. We're going to turn it on for half an hour, and we're going to see take the fan off and see what the temperature is. We'll, I'll continue to let it run for another half an hour, without the fan on, we'll let it see what the temperature is. And then I'm gonna close the back and go another half an hour. So basically I should get to what would be considered probably the maximum temperature in each of the three conditions. So to put it on, it's not too bad. There's uh, one little thing, most people don't read the book and there's one little trick that might be helpful. First thing we have to do is take off this little cover right here and it's really easy to drop. Kind of stick your finger on there like that. The cool part is there's a little storage area right here on the back and you can store it right there. And it only goes on in one way. So if it doesn't pop in, then turn it around. But now I can store it. So if you drop it, I'd be careful if you're doing this outside because if you drop it in grass or something, you'll probably never find it. You might want to make sure the camera's face down so that if when you pull it out you know I've dropped it three or four times there's also a cover on the fan that pops off it just pulls off and nowhere to store this one in the device but it's quite a bit larger and so just put it in a safe place like an SD card it's big enough that you'd probably be okay now to attach it we just line up the contacts with the contacts here we push it in and then we turn the thumb screws down and the thumb screws should be I assume pretty tight. Now, don't over tighten it, obviously, but we want the the back of the fan up against it. Okay, let's turn the camera on real quick. And if we go to the menu now, you'll see that it knows that the fan is on. And I'm not sure it might have this, no matter if it's on or not, but we're gonna set it to auto two, which prioritizes the temperature. Auto one prioritizes keeping it low and quiet. It's not loud anyway. Auto 2 focuses on keeping it cool. And of course, we can just force it to be low or high. And we're going to go Auto 2 because our 
goal is to see just how cool we'll keep this camera. So we'll go auto two. Okay. And there we go. Oops, go back. There we go. So we'll set our timer for half an hour, 30 minutes. And then we'll take it off and see what the temperature is then. Okay, been about half an hour. Let's just see where we're at. I'm gonna measure the temperature of this. I can definitely hear the fan going. It's going pretty good. It's not that loud, but let's just see what it says. So the, the surface of the, the camera over here is now up to 90 degrees, so it's getting warm. The fan itself is actually 76, which I think is just about room temperature. Let's go ahead and take it off. I have to turn it off. And then you can actually do both thumb screws at the same time. And we're at, looks like the hottest spot I'm getting is there's like right up there, I'm getting 95 degrees. Um, down there about 83 so it feels like so it looks like this is the warmest spot and like I said it's around 95 degrees so basically body temperature not too hot so now we're going to turn the camera back on and we're going to let it run half an hour with the display open and take the temperature again okay we've been 30 minutes now with the display open let's just see what our temperature is so I'm 117 degrees up here, 114, 117. So it's pretty hot. Even the handle's up to 103 now. So it's pretty warm. So now we're going to close the display. And now that they can't get the heat out. Let's just go another 30 minutes and see how hot it gets. Okay, we've been a half an hour again and the display's been closed. So let's see how hot it is. So 125. The middle is about, you get down to the lower, it's about 100. This top corner seems to be the hottest. It's about 130 degrees in that top corner. So the fan definitely makes a difference. It looks like even having it open helps a little bit. If I remember right, it was about 117. So it's about 10 degrees hotter with the display closed than it was with it open. That might be important. Of course, the ambient temperature is pretty important as well. If it was 95 or 100 degrees outside, I'm probably gonna have a little more of a problem. Okay, I guess I'm a little surprised. It seems to work exceptionally well. Looks like it keeps the camera around 30 degrees cooler than if you have the display closed and maybe 20 degrees cooler. Now, obviously, if you really want a true picture, it would take a lot more testing, but I think it gives me a pretty good idea that the concept works. Now, maybe the Ulanzi would work pretty well. I assume that blowing air against it would at least help a little, but this obviously works quite a bit better because it's not just blowing air, it's actually pulling heat out. One thing that I wondered about was how much battery this took because it is pulling power from the camera battery, whereas I think the Ulanzi has its own little battery that you charge. So I ran a test with this on and the camera set to the auto setting one. The battery lasted about two hours and 15 minutes. So I put a new battery in, took the fan off, and at two hours and 15 minutes, I still showed a couple bars. So I decided to come back 30 minutes later and 30 minutes later, it had gone dead. So between that 30 minute span, so I'm guessing it lasted at least 20 minutes longer before it went dead. It still had two bars showing. So it looks like it probably takes maybe 10 to 12% of the battery if you're running the fan. So not as much as I thought. I That I can deal with. It's not that hard to have a couple extra batteries around. Whether you need it or not, well, I think if you're in a case where you're really stressing the sensor because you're shooting a lot of video, it might it might pay off. It might be worth the extra money because it's definitely going to be better for your camera, those electronics to get hot. And I think a lot of excessive heat, I do think, degrades sensors or can degrade sensors over time. 
if you're out there shooting stills and just occasional video, I doubt if your camera is getting hot enough to worry about. If you've seen the hot, hot warning light come on quite a bit, or if you've had to set the setting to where you have to, uh, the camera doesn't shut off till it gets extra hot. I don't remember. There's a setting there which kind of gives you two levels of sensitivity. If you're having to do that, then you might consider this one and it might be worth the $200. Well, I hope this was helpful. I, like I said, this is mainly for people that are considering this specific device. I think at least I gave you some idea of what kind of temperature changes to expect and what kind of performance to expect for your bunny. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like the video, make a comment below. If you decide to buy the fan, I'd love to hear your comments and maybe hit that like button. Until the next time, see ya.